Hi guys, well today is the day we can finally lift the lid on the new NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti. And so on the 1st of March, just a week ago, NVIDIA announced the most talked about GPU of the last 12 months. Some gamers have been holding off investing into the GTX 10 series as rumours surrounding the Ti have really been circulating around pretty much every community out there. 1080 Ti is designed for ultra high definition gaming, giving users the ability there to tap into some of the best performance that Nvidia has released under their new Pascal generation of cards. There will be plenty of custom designs arriving in the coming weeks, but this one here today adopts Nvidia's new vapor chamber blower design. And so the cost for the founder's edition here of 1080 Ti is going to sit around about 699 in the UK and the same in the US. And you'll be able to buy this directly from the GeForce website. And that pricing is going to mean that it will fit into that gap between the 1080 and the Titan X. And if the figures are anything to go by, this card here could be closer to the Titan X in terms of performance. So let's waste no further time and jump straight in. Okay, so this is the GTX 1080 Ti. And you'll see straight away that it has a striking resemblance there to the GTX 1070 and 1080. In part because of the size, but also that Founders Edition there carries a consistent aesthetic. And that NVIDIA reference cooler uses a single cooling fan in a new vapor chamber blower design, which may be more favorable for some of you. And later on we'll detach that heatsink and check out the finer details. Now we don't have a Founders 1080 to hand, but right next to that custom 1080 there, you can weigh up the overall size. However, having the measurements will be beneficial to a lot of folks out there with limitations in their case. And so, for the length, TI is 268mm, for the width you're looking at 97mm, and then the height is 38mm. And so this card here should fit inside most cases. Now this is the reference card, and the Founders edition here is sat at the original value, so we have no overclock as such. And so the TI it operates at a base clock of 1480 and that boosts up to 1584 megahertz and the memory clock operates at 11 gigabit and so while those figures there are lower than the 1080 it is the CUDA cores the texture units and things like the memory bus which are given a significant boost and are very similar there to that of the Titan X and another interesting implementation is the 11 gig of GDDR5 X and as you would expect TI also has the PCI Express 3.0 compliance DirectX 12 ready and it supports OpenGL 4.5. So TI is going to occupy two spaces on your board and your case, uh, so nothing unusual there. But on this back panel here we have quite a nice selection of ports to choose from. So we have one dual link DVI-D giving you up to 3K, triple DisplayPort 1.4s and those can give you up to 8K at 60Hz. And we also have one HDMI 2.0 and that offers 4K at 60Hz. And so plenty of support there for ultra high definition gaming and if you are planning there to use just one screen then HDMI or DisplayPort are your best options. Now Nvidia recommend a 600 watt power supply for TI and you will need a 6 and an 8 pin connector there for the power delivery which really doesn't come as much of a surprise. Since TI is a high end graphics card from Nvidia's lineup this card does indeed arrive with SLI ports so you can combine more than one card for some multi GPU action. Flipping TI over, the entire backside of this card is concealed by this plastic panelling here uh, to shield the PCB from getting knocked and it'll also provide some strength uh, to the board as well. And apart from some etching, that is pretty much it. Okay, next let's take a close look at the new vapour chamber cooling. Now to get at the thermal design, it is somewhat unorthodox. You have to remove all the screws from the outside edge and then the covers will lift off. and we're presented with this neat little heatsink. This heatsink has direct contact with the GPU and it relies on a single fan to flush out the buildup of heat which is being lifted off. And unlike other designs we've seen, this heatsink here has the primary objective of just handling the GPU. The VRMs actually sit directly underneath the fan. Now at this stage we'd usually have a clean look at the PCB but after removing some 34 screws and you know seeing another 14 bolts we decided it would be a good idea to give it a miss this time round. However you can just about see the voltage circuitry and VRMs anyway which are just over on the right side of the GPU and we have a 7 phase dual FET design. So the real driving force behind our TI is Nvidia's GP102 which is also found on the Titan X. So that uses a 16 nanometer process and it is likely to be the last card using Pascal architecture. And as we mentioned before this GPU here is at the stock settings with a base clock of 1480 
boosting right up to 1584. So guys, to test the TI, we're going to run some gaming benchmarks to reveal how this card performs. And we're going to be adding some new titles. So we're going to use For Honor, Ghost Recon Wildlands, Hitman, Battlefield 1, The Witcher 3 and Titanfall 2. And inside each of these games we're going to be going with 4K for the resolution and then we'll ramp it right up to Ultra for the detail presets. Now for those wanting more resolutions, additional games and comparison against other cards, please head over to the full review in the description. And while we check out these games, we're also going to have GPUs that there running in the background to pick up on the max GPU temperature. Okay, and if we just jump out of our game, we can see what the GPU peaked out at in GPU Z. Okay, and there is the max GPU temperature reading. So that is the GTX 1080 Ti, highly anticipated and understandably so. Nvidia has really aimed for the skies with this new release. Uh, the objective is to present a card which even outperforms the renowned Titan X. And with the arrival of Ti, other cards that are in the stack have kind of received that nudge down in price as things have been adjusted to make room for this new card, this new flagship. Now with such a huge frame buffer and CUDA cores, this card here is perfect for ultra high definition settings and the VR environment. As you've seen there from our run of benchmarks, TI is able to handle 4K reasonably well when it is maxed out. Ghost Recon obviously being that exception, uh, but that could just be down to optimization with that NVIDIA pre-release driver. Now if you are a 1080p gamer then this could likely be overkill uh, but if you are using something like a 240Hz display and if you do dip into workstation type tasks which demand heavy GPU usage uh, then it may be useful uh, in a scenario outside of the gaming arena. So this is a superb card and it is a clear message from NVIDIA that they are not waiting for that competition to catch up. As always guys, if you want to see how this card here performs against other graphics cards, 
at other resolutions and other games, be sure to check out the full review which is going to be on the screen and in the description. Thanks very much for taking time of your day to watch guys. Take care and I will see you guys next time.